Well, hey there, everyone. I hope you enjoy the outdoor scenic background of Wisconsin where I'm visiting family for the week. I wanted to give you a channel update to announce that I am planning on releasing my next book review coming up in September. Because of things, uh, I got busy and didn't have time to start the series. And the other thing about it is uh, I learned from my series, A History of God with Karen Armstrong, that this time I'm going to read, I've read the book all the way through twice and I'm planning out all the videos before I start the official recording. So we're going to be looking at the book Did Jesus Exist by Professor Bart Ehrman. I'll do a jump cut where I put the picture of the book up right about here. If you want to get a copy, I will be using the Kindle edition that is available on Amazon, but you can check your local bookstore if you prefer to have hard copies for either a new or used copy. Or you can use Amazon or other book providers. But if you want to get a head start on the book series, or the book itself for the series, then I wanted to give you guys about two weeks advance notice as to when I would be kicking it off. So I don't have an official date yet, but I am aiming for the middle of September. And the reason that I want to take up this book did Jesus exist is it's um, because it's an issue that I've inter I'm interested in and I have something to say more than just reviewing the book if you pay attention to these kinds of things you'll know that there is a debate between those who advance the idea that Jesus didn't exist and historians in universities who asserted that he did and oftentimes the debates about whether or not there was an historical Jesus revolve around looking at the evidence for Jesus and debating whether or not that evidence is valid. And uh, although that's how the debate has so far proceeded, I find that rather unsatisfactory and it's not the reason why I became convinced that Jesus was an historical figure. And it doesn't bother me if Jesus existed any more than it bothers me if Buddha existed or Muhammad existed. Their existence isn't relevant to the quality of their claims, which are supernatural in nature and have never been demonstrated to have any validity. So for me, the question is really about getting our historical facts correct. And in my view, there is overwhelming uh, evidence on the side of a historical Jesus. I know for many people on YouTube, that's not the most popular view. And that's why I wanted to make this series. And I didn't want to just rehash the same arguments that have been made over and over and over again. And that is why I'm using Bart Ehrman's book, not as a book review per se, but I'm using it as a basis to form what I think is a more convincing argument. In the series, what I will be doing is instead of presenting the argument as it has already existed, debating this piece of evidence and that piece of evidence, I want to look at it as I do as a social scientist. And as social scientists, when we collect data, our role as social scientists is to account for our observations. The data is always the data. The data that exists is the data that we have and the data we have to work with. And the question is, which theory does a better job of explaining the evidence that we already have available to us? So I'm going to put up a slide that I have constructed based on information both in Did Jesus Exist and also a little bit outside of that particular book when it comes to the issue of Christologies. I'll put up that slide now so you can have a look at it. When you look at this slide, you'll see that there are many pieces of information, documentation that we have moving across the first century into the second and then going on to the third centuries. But this really focuses on the texts that we have extant or you know, uh, physically present for us in our time, whether it's fragments um, or a, link, a, a lineage going back to an earlier version, and what scholars have done with that information. Now, a good theory will be able to account for the observable evidence. And what I'm going to be doing in the book series is moving in between various chapters and pages of Bart, Professor Bart Ehrman's book to construct what I see as a uh, competition between two theoretical models. In the social sciences, we often have what are called model competitions because there might be more than one explanation for a particular phenomenon. And the way we evaluate the theories that we have is to evaluate which theory can account for the most observations. And the one that does the best job of explaining the data as we have it available is the preferred theory. And that's what I'm going to be doing with this series. So it's not really going to be a straight up book review because I'm not going to be going through it chapter by chapter. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is presenting the book that I wish Bart Ehrman had written 
Um, but obviously he's a historian and not, not a social scientist, so that, that's fine. But I think looking at these two ideas of a mythical Jesus and an historical Jesus and putting them in competition with each other and examining which one does a better job of accounting for what we see in the texts that are available is the way to proceed fairly and to judge the two theories based on what they can explain. Because I don't think that it's very helpful or useful to go around attacking evidence and undermining it. I don't think that undermining evidence provides an explanation any more than when a creationist attacks theor the theory of evolution by trying to attack transitional fl fossils and then saying, well, if I can disprove your theory, then you have to accept that the world was created. No, that's not evidence in favor of your theory. And if we discount for whatever reason, uh, sorry, I thought I felt a bug on me. If we discount for some reason of authenticity, one piece of evidence, that doesn't mean Jesus didn't exist. There is a burden of proof on mythicists to be able to account for what we can observe and have observed in terms of our evidence, just as that burden falls on people who purport, who advance the idea of an historical Jesus. So I'm going to be working on the premise that we're going to be looking at the evidence as it exists, and I'm going to first go through uh, the, uh, the standards of, of what historians do. I'm going to look at the context of the first century and why it's important that our theories also fit in within the historical context, the archaeological information that we have, and then going through um, various pieces of evidence and explaining the extent of the way in which the historical Jesus theory, as I'll present it, can account for what we observe. And then at the end, because I'm not an expert in the mythicist side of things, I will present the questions and concerns I have about the theory, if we were to construct a theory of a mythical Jesus, and why I find it uh, very deficient as a way to account for the evidence. And I'm setting it up in that way so that those who are proponents of the mythical Jesus idea can take up the evidence that I've laid out and the way that I see that evidence being accounted for, <laughs> bugs, that evidence being accounted for by the historical Jesus theory. And if you want to then present an evidence-based um, explanation that cites other sources and, and does that same job, well then that is how academic discourse proceeds and I would look forward to that. So it's not going to be a traditional book review. If you want, like I said, I'm going to give you guys now about two weeks to go out and buy the book. If for whatever reason you can't afford it or you don't want to read it, I will also in the description box below link talks that Professor Bart Ehrman has already given on this topic and also on historical methods and methodologies so that even if you haven't read the book itself, because he talks about these issues again and again when he debates um, uh, like fundamentalist New Testament pr uh, uh, proponents, there are common themes that come up in his book over and over again. And I'm going to provide links in that so that you, even if you haven't read the book, you'll still have a framework for understanding what it is that I'm using and drawing on. So that's uh, the update I wanted to give you guys. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I appreciate it. I've been Christy out here in the wilderness with the bugs and the wasps and the frogs and the crickets and whatever else is making that noise. And you've been awesome. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.